we're back at it again. Well, let's go, let's just update where we are with this whole thing. Um, start with the production side. Yeah. Been in the process for two and a half years, coming up on three years, I think. So on the production side, it's been um, it's been great. It's been a uh, an awesome experience from the the first time we got together back in April of 2017, and and uh, got Barry involved. Me and Todd uh, talked, and we got Barry, and he said he's on board. And we uh, the next month we were going to Connecticut and uh, lined up some interviews there, not knowing kind of where this was going to go, how much, you know, at that time, it's kind of you just hope for, for things to happen and uh, people to get involved and get interviews and, you know, and uh, at that time we had Reed Howard, we lined up, we interviewed uh, Barry uh, and uh, Bob Carney and that went great. It was, it was a great experience uh, and then it was kind of like, well, what do we do now? Who, who else can we go after? Reaching well, out. we had a groove, you yeah. know, we established a groove. Yes, yeah. kind of set a standard, a quality standard of what we were trying to do. We knew, we knew how much time everyone was going to take, mm -hmm. which was much longer than we originally anticipated right. because people have more stories to tell than we imagined, yeah, which was great. Yeah, from my perspective, doing most of the interviews, um, I I really didn't know that there would be this depth of material and different perspectives, because you read about Mo, everybody sort of shares the same information. So it sounds like collectively there is this guy and here's who he is. That's not how it turned out. We have 47 so far different interviews with 47 different takes on, on Mo, his life, his swing, every aspect of it. And um, it's very rich, much more ambitious than, as I said, I, I didn't imagine we'd be at it this long and still we have a ways to go, yeah. but we can't stop, it's too good. No, it's, it's, it's getting its wheels going and it's moving. Yeah. I think one of the things that has been uh, fun for me to kind of see is, is the, um, how much love people have for Mo and this whole thing. Uh, it, people were so close to him. He, he might not, not even have known that, how close people are, how much they cared about him and things like that. And we've seen so much of that. Uh, the Henry Brunton interview is a, is a classic example of that. And his interview was fantastic. And, and I know, I've known Henry for a long time, but I didn't know all that stuff about Henry. And when he talked about Mo and how much he cared about Mo and what Mo meant to him and he meant to Mo, uh, that was really good. That was really good. And I've seen a lot of that. And of course, had to ask everyone we talked to their reaction to Mo's passing, which everyone expected it, but you know, there's a certain day when it happens. And in virtually every interview, people would hit an emotional wall there. Yeah, one of the biggest ones was Mike Martz when we went to Canada and, and, and his, you know, his emotion, it was our first really, wow, okay, just how much he impacted those people's lives and when he passed, how hard it was for, for many of them. Well, to, to all accept. of us had tears in our eyes. Oh, yeah. I looked around, you know, it was, it was a, unavoidable. Emotional moment. Yeah. And then you have Kelly Murray, who <laughs> I don't think anybody does yeah. a better oh, interview. Oh, yeah, he was quite a character. I don't think anybody Kelly can Murray. do Mo Norman. Yeah, I yeah. think he does Mo better than Mo did Mo. You know, in oh, the yeah. way, yeah, he's fantastic. It was, uh, he was definitely entertaining just to watch uh, his, uh, ooh, and getting all into the Mo he's great. Uh, talks. He's and fantastic. His facial expressions were, he got it down. And, uh, and Lauren Rubenstein, you know, who grew up across the street from, you know, was it the Haviland? What was the name of that? That uh, I'm not sure. golf course where Mo. So he, he, he saw Mo from the time he was a young yeah. boy develop all the way through, and he wrote a book about him, I mean, and has the factual information about him that, you know, as a journalist, he's not entitled to just spin stories, whether they're true or not. So yeah. he was kind of like our. our our uh, bedrock, you know, yeah. of, of information. And then uh, you know, even hearing from Tim O'Connor, uh, who wrote the book, The Feeling of Greatness, hearing his stories that we experienced. But at the same time, um, you know, Herb Horsheiser and Tim, you know, McCutcheon, them, them going at it together was, was quite, was fun. It was, was very fun interview. to watch. Yeah. And, uh, the ones that, that kind of been around him for, for years and played with him and, and hung out with him. Well, one of the things that you, you really saw in, in all these things were you saw we're seeing this, and as this story develops, we're seeing the different eras that Mo went through in his life at different times. I mean, he had 
the younger years and the middle years and the older years, and, and you're hearing people talk about them when they knew them in these periods of time. So there's a lot of stories there that are that were I like we're archaeologists digging these things yeah. out, and uh, people are going to have just it's an amazing story. Well, they're going to have a, a difficult time sorting out the truth that because yeah. some of these stories have been told and retold, and they become part of the mythology of Mo, and they're almost always a kernel of truth, but people's remembrances of these things can often be competing with. And we're not trying to present a unified picture. We're trying to show the, the mosaic that was Mo. Because right. he showed himself differently to different people. Yeah, well, like, like the tour players, for example. And, and, I, and you know, I kind of approach Mo from that perspective as this incredible ball striker. And you had David Frost talking about Mo in the sense of, I just had to see this legend hit balls. I mean, he just was a legend to him. And it, it, what did David say? Like, if you saw a Mo on the range, you had to go watch him hit golf balls because he was that good. So you have that perspective. And then you had the Peter Jacobson perspective where he saw Moses and Peter himself being an incredible entertainer in the golf. Peter, you know, said to us, hey, we're in the entertainment business here. And he saw Mo as a great entertainer, whereas people, you know, other people said Mo was autistic, but then you put a golf club in his hands and he became this, he morphed into this incredible entertainer and Peter Jacobson saw that. So you had this type of story too. It's just great to see it evolve. And, and speaking of autism, uh, which is, you know, was, has been a raging debate about, uh, about, uh, among Mo's fa uh, fans and even close associates, um, we interviewed Dr. Daryl Trefford, who's the world's leading uh, expert on savants, which uh, he has made a study of Mo himself. He wasn't really that into Mo or golf until we introduced him to this challenge. And it's, you know, well, you'll see in the results, but he has really interesting take on what happened to Mo.